the new tolerance, you have to accept all of their values, all of their beliefs. D. James Kennedy Ministries presents Truths That Transform. Today on Truths That Transform, we take a look at a dangerous law threatening your liberties. With the Equality Act, it actually does not have the clause that allows for freedom of conscience. And if you happen to disagree, you will be labeled a bigot and a hater, or worse, all in the name of tolerance. They want um, conformity to their viewpoint, and they want to ostracize people who disagree with their viewpoint to the, to the level of Klansmen. We will look at how the word tolerance is being falsely used to promote intolerance in our culture, all on today's Truths That Transform. Welcome to Truths That Transform, a production of D. James Kennedy Ministries where we are standing for truth and defending your freedom. There is a bill being pushed in Congress that would strip away your First Amendment rights of religious freedom, and it has already been passed in the House of Representatives. It's called the Equality Act. To the naive, it may sound good, Who's opposed to equality and fairness? I'm certainly not. But so often these bills have Orwellian names. They promise one thing and deliver the exact opposite. That's exactly the case with the so-called Equality Act. Our own Dr. Jerry Newcomb brings us this report. The legislation is a top priority because equality for the LGBTQ is, is a top priority for us. Sexual orientation, orientation and gender identity deserve full civil rights protections in the workplace and in every place. With all the pressing issues the country faces, Congress made passage of the so-called Equality Act a top priority. And yet Speaker Pelosi even admitted, quote, if there's some collateral damage for some others who do not share our view, so be it, end quote. The bill is passed. The Equality Act is a bill that seeks to add sexual orientation and gender identity to the Civil Rights Act of 1964, but it removes all religious protection that will be provided under the Religious Freedom Restoration Act. Ideally, when you have a non-discrimination law, it needs to be based on something intrinsic that can't change, like race or gender. It should not be based on things that can literally change from day to day. One of the great misconceptions is that somehow this whole transgender movement is supported by science and that recognizing gender identity rather than sex as the determinant of whether we are male or female has been scientifically proven to be valid. Uh, really the opposite is the case. Sex is a biological term rooted in reproductive capacity and is immutable. You cannot change someone's sex. Critics note that the Equality Act would nullify virtually all pro-life laws to protect the pre-born, forcing taxpayers to fund abortions. It would also codify into law the militant LGBTQ agenda, including the transgender push. So a man who identifies as a woman can use the ladies' room, and on it goes. Some critics note that this law denies scientific realities. Human beings are two sexes, and you, you've either got the chromosomes of a male or the chromosomes of a female, um, and to, to deny that is to deny basic reality. And to put people who have what used to be called and should be called gender dysphoria under a protected class and to say that if you discriminate, if you, if you say no, that you, you're not a different sex than you were born, uh, that you are discriminating and we're gonna open up all the restrooms and all the other facilities um, to, to be in a protected status for this, it's insanity. It's legal insanity. Critics note that the Equality Act would punish those who disagree with the radical LGBTQ agenda even on religious grounds. They want to control speech. They're acting like fascists on campus and censors. Um, 
they want um, conformity to their viewpoint and they want to ostracize people who disagree with their viewpoint to the, to the level of Klansmen. They want to turn us into the ostracized equivalent of Ku Klux Klansmen. With the transgender movement, we're talking, by definition, we're talking not about what people do in private, but about what they do in public, how they present themselves publicly, how they want to be treated in the workplace, in the schools, uh, on athletic teams, in the restrooms and showers and locker rooms. Um, so this is very much a, a public issue. It's not one of just tolerance. It's one of forced affirmation. People are being told that they, uh, the government, will use, the force of law will be used to compel them to affirm something, in some cases, that they believe is a falsehood, namely the idea that a man can become a woman or a woman can become a man. Nancy Piercy, author and professor, notes that the so-called Equality Act makes some Americans more equal than others, and those who disagree with this agenda will be completely marginalized. The Equality Act creates a collision course with the First Amendment because what it is saying is many things that are taught in the Bible would no longer be legal in the employment context. And so whether churches and ministries would be forced to comply, many Christian business owners and others would find themselves in a very tough situation. It's expanding an agenda that says if you're going to be a moral employer, you will be in violation of the law. So the Equality Act would affect religious liberty pretty dramatically. Number one, it would penalize Americans that don't hold the same social views on sexuality and gender identity as everyone else, particularly religious Americans. Um, it would also compel speech, would force Americans to talk about these issues in the same way, even if they don't agree. Um, and lastly, it completely guts the federal uh, re religious Freedom Restoration Act, which would provide protections against the government being able to burden uh, an American's religious exercise. As you have just seen, the so-called Equality Act is a dangerous law that would be used to silence you and to dismantle your Christian conscience. And it has already been passed in the House of Representatives. That's why we have put together an urgent letter of demand to your United States Senators calling upon them to stand against and soundly defeat the Equality Act in the Senate. This legislation is dangerous and damaging, and it is radically unconstitutional. And we have to act now to see this bill defeated, to protect the conscience rights and the religious liberties of Christians and really all people of faith. Contact us right away to receive your demand letter for the senators. Sign it and return it to us as quickly as possible. And we will join your voice together with thousands of others to defeat this pernicious legislation. Simply write to us at D. James Kennedy Ministries, Box 11154, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33339 or you can call us toll free, 877-962-7677, or go online to djkm.org. D. James Kennedy saw all of this coming years ago, and I'm joined now by his daughter and my very dear friend, Jennifer Kennedy Cassidy. Jennifer, your dad would be disappointed, but not surprised by what we're seeing today. That's right, Frank, and he was so astute on these issues, and he could see that the ungodly were twisting things in their favor. All around us, Christian truth is being stripped away and religious freedom is being radically diminished in the name of tolerance. It's ironic because it's actually a very adamant form of intolerance that parades under the name of tolerance. My dad used to refer to them as the shock troops of tolerance. If you're a Christian with conservative and biblical views, the last thing you will receive from them is tolerance. They will work to shut down your business, penalize you, silence you, fine you, and even imprison you if they can. If that's tolerance, I'd hate to see intolerance. My dad shares more in this excerpt from his series on discerning good and evil. Now, all of us know what tolerance means. Tolerance means that you put
put up with or bear with people who hold to views or beliefs or values or lifestyle that you don't agree with. And if you're a Christian or for that matter even a gentleman or a lady, you will bear with them graciously and kindly. Even though you disagree with them, you will try to be tolerant and uh, kind to them. This is what tolerance means. Not anymore. It too has gone through the Department of Truth. It has been crushed and smushed and spread out until it means something entirely different. The new tolerance is that we are not only to put up with and bear with others who have differing views and values and habits and lifestyles and beliefs than our own, than our own, but we are to accept those beliefs, those values, that lifestyle as absolutely equal to and just as valid as our own. That is the new tolerance. So you see, therefore, you haven't got any religious beliefs that are any better than anyone else's, since after all, everything is relative, and since your beliefs are not any better than theirs, and since your moral views are not superior to their moral views, no matter if they're little more than an alley cat in their sexual lives, you cannot indeed impose your views upon them, which flows out of that. You must accept not only them, but you must graciously and kindly accept their lifestyle, their beliefs, their habits as absolutely equal to your own. And if you don't, you are an intolerant bigot. And kids by the millions have been called that in front of their classmates in the classrooms of this country. And most of them indeed quake before such an assault as that. Well, any person who gives up a belief in the moral absolutes and the absolute truth of the faith that he has been taught will be incapable of distinguishing right from wrong and will, as McDowell says, be powerless to resist temptation and choose the right. This is what is happening to millions of students in our schools today. Because of the new tolerance, not only do you put up with the person graciously and kindly, but you accept all of their views, their beliefs, their values, and their lifestyle as equal with your own. And if you don't, ah, my friend, there are serious consequences that are waiting for you because they go on and they have progressed even beyond what I've said so that today they want not only your glad acceptance of all of their views, lifestyle, beliefs, and values, and habits as equal with your own, but they want you to participate in what they do. They want you to endorse it and to participate in it. It has been well said that the last virtue of a degenerating population is tolerance. When people no longer live up to any of the moral values that made society great, the last value they hang on to is tolerance. They demand that everybody tolerate their wickedness and they will tolerate theirs the last value of a degenerate society. 
As Dr. Kennedy just shared, tolerance is the last virtue of a degenerating population. Our culture now accepts and even celebrates virtually every form of deviance, except, of course, the unforgivable act of telling the truth. Janique Stewart is a Christian apologist who herself has been in the crosshairs of the shock troops of tolerance. She was disinvited from a speaking engagement at Cornell University where she was to share her pro-life views. As a result, she's been taking a close look at the tactics of the left-wing elitists and the things they do to shut down the opposition, like the so-called Equality Act. I recently sat down with Janique here in our studio to discuss it. Tell us what the Equality Act would do and what, uh, what specific protections that we have now would sure. be affected by it. Well, I think the Equality Act, if what we need to understand and know about the Equality Act, is it's just a, another, another tool that they're actually trying to use to try and implement SOGI laws, which are sexual orientation and gender identity laws, to protect them as if they are, actually I think they're trying to implement them in the Civil Rights Act. So trying to implement them and force them, trying to compare them as if they are the same. Well, if we go back to the Civil Rights Act, that was oftentimes based in characteristics that are immutable, right. that cannot be changed. Our skin tone, our nationality, those are things that are fixed. Our skin tone, our eyes, I mean, if, we, if I said, you know what, for the next 30 seconds, let's just really try real hard to change those things. No matter how long mm. I were to give you, you cannot change that. But they're trying to say that it's the same thing when it comes to sexual orientation and gender identity, and we just know that's not true. But the danger is the implications of that. One of the consequences and who it can actually impact are even students. Number one, Anyone who expresses dissent, first and foremost, is seen as hostile, a bully, or even bigoted. But we also see this now in the sports arena, mm. where this will allow young men to not only use the locker room if they identify as a female, but it also then allows them to have an advantage in the arena of athletics, because men and women are made differently. And therefore, they're going to perform differently. So when you allow, as we're already seeing right now in the news, where you have males running on the female track team, well, guess who's probably going to win? And that is simply because men and women are different. We shouldn't apologize for those differences, nor should we try and erase those differences. The Civil Rights Act does protect people based on sex, so the Equality Act is designed to redefine the definition. Is that it? Absolutely. Including sexual orientation and gender identity as part of the protected class in the Civil Rights Act. Is that yes, it? Yes, it's definitely trying to do that. It's actually trying to to muddy those waters and erase those lines of distinction and trying to redefine gender to include transgenders. So let's, let's, let's apply that to real world situations, some we've already seen in recent years, public accommodation laws. Uh, you're going to have to uh, be careful on what you do with everything from renting a room to providing professional services that you do for the general public, a little bit like our Christian friends, the bakers, the photographers, Absolutely. and the florists who have been hauled before governing bodies and sanctioned for their refusal to participate in a, in a ceremony that they believe violates their Christian convictions. But the Civil Rights Act, basically, if this is modified in this way, it really does away with freedom, freedom of, of conscience. conscience. Yes, Explain that's that. actually what's at stake, is freedom of conscience, because that also means, for example, physicians who do not, whether it's a psychologist, or even surgeons or doctors who treat those like maybe adolescents. What if there is an adolescent and you're a pediatrician who comes in and this young adolescent actually wants to have an operation where they are now becoming trans, 
That means that physician no longer has freedom of conscience to say, well, wait a minute, I do not actually want to prescribe hormones to try and help this person change over, nor do I want to perform surgeries. But especially even when it comes to the hormone aspect of prescribing medication, that freedom of conscience then is actually, it's silenced. Now you no longer have the right to say, well, wait a minute, because of my faith, because of what it is that I believe, I'm not comfortable doing this. Well, with the Equality Act, it actually does not have the clause that allows for freedom of conscience. My friends, as you've just heard, the Equality Act, which has already passed the United States House of Representatives, is a direct threat to your and my freedom as Christians to act according to our consciences. But we are not just waiting around, lamenting the unjustness of all of this. We are doing something about it. And I am asking you to join us. We have put together a letter of demand to your United States senators calling upon them to stop this blatantly unconstitutional law in its tracks. The misleadingly named Equality Act is a thinly veiled attempt to force Christians to comply with the homosexual and transgender activists. Contact us right away to get your letter of demand, sign it, and return it to us as quickly as possible so that we can join your voice together with thousands of others and get results from our elected representatives on this vital issue. Simply write to us at D. James Kennedy Ministries, Box 11154, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33339, or call toll free 877-962-7677. Or you can go online to djkm.org. As always, our aim in these programs is to help you see how God's Word speaks to all areas of life and culture and to equip you with biblical answers to the great moral, ethical, and cultural questions of our day. That's why if you're able to include a generous donation, we will also send you an incisive book that is vitally important for these days in which the Lord has placed us. It's called Demanding Tolerance, Losing Our Freedom to Disagree by John Amon. The left cries out for tolerance, but wants to criminalize any disagreement on homosexuality, transgenderism, and other issues, making dissent punishable as hate speech. Not so very tolerant when you get right down to it. Find out the truth and how to provide biblical answers to those who call our Christian beliefs outdated and intolerant. I will send you Demanding Tolerance as my thanks for your generous donation to help us continue the vitally important work of this ministry. And if you are able to include a donation of $40 or more, we will send you the book plus the new DVD program, Discerning Good and Evil, featuring an insightful full-length message from Dr. D. James Kennedy, as well as interviews with key Christian experts on the front lines of the battle between biblical faithfulness and political correctness. That's the book, Demanding Tolerance, as well as the special DVD program, Discerning Good and Evil, as our thanks for your donation of just $40 or more. And whatever you do, please be sure to contact us to get your letter of demand for your United States senators calling upon them to soundly defeat the radically unconstitutional Equality Act. Simply write to us at D. James Kennedy Ministries, Box 11154, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33339, or call toll free 877-962-7677, or go online to djkm.org. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi has put forward the so-called Equality Act. A very nice title, don't you think? 
Well, the act actually seeks explicitly to overturn laws protecting religious conscience and would open up churches and ministries and Christian businesses to a whole new line of legal attacks because of their biblical beliefs. Such attacks are already legion. The Supreme Court has recently agreed to hear the case of a Christian funeral home in Michigan. The funeral home's mission statement seeks to, quote, honor God in all that we do. But the Equal Opportunity Employment Commission, your tax dollars at work, has tried to force this business to let a male funeral director dress as a female. Now, it's important amidst these attacks that we understand what's going on. These mounting cases on sex and gender issues are not only about biology and body parts and clothing and who loves whom. At a fundamental level, this cultural battle is a battle over definitions. Has God decreed what male and female and marriage are and done so long before left-wing lawyers showed up on the scene? or? Is man the measure of all things, defining anew generation by generation, or even year by year or day by day, what constitutes male, female, marriage, and the proper boundaries of sex? The first temptation in the Garden of Eden was Satan casting doubt on the Word of God to Adam and Eve. The same rebellion burns hotly today seeking to subvert every God-ordained category and institution to satisfy worldly lust and the thirst for power. Satan seeks to usurp God and to become God. The same work now being pursued by those who want to throw away even the most basic facts of life, to throw them up for grabs. Only God decrees the truth, and we will stand fast, echoing His word, no matter how diligently the courts or the media or the radical left-wing elites try vainly to subvert it. D. James Kennedy Ministries is standing for truth and defending your freedom. Thanks for joining us for this edition of Truths That Transform. I'm Frank Wright. We'll see you next time next week on Truths That Transform. The truth is, the only people they really want to discriminate against and rule out are Christians. So the sky becomes the limit. I can be multi-gender, I can be ambigender, I can, I can be a gender blender where we throw everything into a blender and mix it together. That's next week. Today's program is available on DVD for your gift to this ministry of any amount. Please call, write, or log on to our website today. This has been a production of D. James Kennedy Ministries.